just going to go the go back live and... button is just on rotate oh i think it's gone live i hope it's live it says live three seconds okay fantastic hello everyone it's katie here from average academy and i'm joined with brenda from young learners curriculum um so welcome to today's live sorry for the slightly late start we're just getting everything set up ready for you um so we can share lots of exciting things today um so if you're just tuning in do you want to just pop uh, your name in the chat tell us where you're joining from and introduce yourself uh, it's always good to know who's joining us and um you know, get everyone engaged a bit in the live um and it's always good to know as well the tech is working because <laughs> nothing worse than us chatting away to ourselves and no one being there i can see people tuning in already so that looks good which is fantastic so yeah, introduce yourself in the comments. Let us know that uh, where you're tuning in from and so that everything's working fine. It'll be great to see you. And while you're all doing that, I just want to very quickly introduce uh, Brenda here, who I think is probably a familiar face for many people. Uh, but Brenda is from the Young Learners Curriculum. And we have a really exciting collaboration uh, between my company, Abridge Academy, and Young Learners Curriculum with the interactive stories, which we're going to be talking about today. So do stay tuned if you want to learn how to engage your learners with these amazing interactive animated awesome stories that Brenda creates um so yeah it's just gonna be rambling Brenda do you want to just introduce yourself tell us a bit more about you hello my name is uh I go by teacher Brenda even though my name is Brenda um I am a teacher specializing in early childhood education because that's where I began my career and I also um, incorporate technology in the classroom as well and thanks to the Believe it or not, guys, the reason we're so interactive is because of that person right there. Uh, she convinced me to go over from Google Slides, which I did make interactive, and then I moved over into Genially, and it's been the greatest thing ever. Um, so I'm the writer of over 100, we're up to 131 stories right now. Gosh, that's and a over lot. a year. Incredible. Yeah, seeing all of these stories going up. And it's so exciting how interactive, how engaging they are, because you really embrace They're getting them. better as That's I go cool. along. Like the latest one, hopefully we'll have time to show it, is actually my latest one. And it looks just like a storybook. And also I spoke to the creator. She saw the image that I created and she said it's beautiful. So I'm hoping to meet the creator soon because she's going to be moving right next door. So maybe I'll finally get to take a vacation to go meet the person that actually creates all, most, most of the images that I use. Yeah, and I so, see see some familiar people as well. Yes, yeah, so I, I see Ivy in the comments, which is fantastic. I can she see uses Ivy here. She does use it. <laughs> awesome, really great to see you, Ivy. Thank you so much for tuning in. Fantastic, Ivy is the uh, developer, the owner of uh, Super Teacher, which I think she's commenting there. Great teaching platform. Do check that out. Um, we've got Stephanie joining us. Hi, Stephanie. Uh, Laura, all the way from Ireland. Fantastic. Not too far from where I am in in south of England here. Uh, Mandy from Ohio, wow, across the pond, a long way away from yes, here. I know Mandy. Oh, awesome. Great. Great to see everyone. Thank you. And thank you so much, Brenda, for this exciting collaboration and for joining us live today. Yes. So as we we're saying, Brenda's created these amazing interactive stories, um, which look incredible. And teachers have left such amazing reviews for it uh, because they're so engaging and wonderful for kids to enjoy in their lessons. It's a great way for young learners in particular, I think, to engage with English and older learners. I actually have 17 year olds that like the story. So Amazing. it goes, it actually, it varies. If you like to read, you just like to read. My, the, the inspiration behind this was, I'm gonna hopefully one day be a grandmother and I love to story tell because I spent my time in the library. So I wanted somewhere that my grandchild in the future one day can just click and hear storytelling because I love storytelling and writing. So it's, and, Thankfully, it's been developed because of all of the teachers' feedback and the kids' feedback and the parents' feedback. So absolutely, it's, you've seen them from the beginning to now. They're so different. Yeah, and it's amazing. It's amazing seeing them develop, as we've been saying. Awesome. Okay, I know a few people are probably curious a bit more about you because depending on where they're tuning in from, some people may not be so familiar with Brenda and your amazing curriculum yet. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about like your teaching background and where all the ideas came from for these amazing stories? Okay, uh, well, like my teaching background began over 25 years ago in the classroom. Uh, we were fortunate enough to continue training in a private school in Lebanon. And because of that private school in Lebanon, they made sure that we were really advanced. They, we had training every single week. We had 
Microsoft, all the PowerPoint training. We never really did Google because they didn't use Google at that time, but we did have interactive smart boards and learning on an interactive smart board. It, I was actually trained to be a trainer on the Promethean smart board right before I left. But with that, it made a lot of interactivity that you're seeing now in Genially and stuff, but it was at the beginning stages of it. And I could create my very beginning private lessons when I came to Bulgaria because I didn't like our business. So I decided to bring my classroom online and then take all of the tech that we already knew and bring it inside the classrooms. Um, so I've been online for over 10 years. And um, and you asked me what inspired the stories. Yeah, the where did the stories, ideas the stories come from? They come from everywhere. It could be my dad, could be my student. Superboy was written after a young man that was in ICU. Uh, the story that got the the largest following on YouTube was actually written for my father and dedicated. He passed away when I was 11. So I wrote a story about him and my mom together, even though they had divorced when I was two, I put them together anyway. And I put my husband's parents in there and his father had passed too. So it was really amazing that it's gotten like over 55,000 views. And I was like, wow. And it was, to me, it wasn't any different than any of the other stories. It just happened to hit at the right time. Um, but the, my, sto my stories all come from real life. Uh, the images, I love the images uh, from Muzak. So that actually inspires me. This, the, the one that you'll see today, if we have time, you'll actually see one that was inspired by just looking at the images. I'm like, these are just too cute not to yeah. take. I think it's incredible that you've taken inspiration from some of these come from kind of traditional stories and things. Some of them have come oh, yeah, from those your two, own life yeah. experiences and you know, your family and of course the kids. And it's fantastic. I think I was reading some of the kids themselves were really engaged in the development of the stories, oh, um, which they is are. really exciting. Uh, the, the one that we have in the fairy tale, the camp, I don't know, you didn't put it in the mer the magic campfire. What, the forest wasn't in there yet, but that was inspired directly by sure. a girl asking. Uh, the Superboy, which is in there, was by a boy. The, his name is James, and that's the story for him. A lot of the characters share the names of my students. Um, and the ones that you're talking about were actually rewrites, like the er Eric Carl's The Very Hungry Caterpillar. I'm like, why can't we do The Very Hungry? No, Tadpole. And we'll teach about the tadpole and the science in the tadpole. And that's when you were like, she actually got me into moving the characters too in Genially. She's like, wouldn't it be great if those could move and eat the things? So I Katie, remember messaging you about that particular story and be like, this is really cool, Brenda. But have you thought about this? Um, that's so when we exciting. started the Genially and, and now it eats. Now with the update where I took it from, um, I, I have actually, I'm going to start updating the original ones from Google Slides so that they can move those characters because they love um, moving the characters. And it reminds me of like Pele and Cowboys and Indians when we were little and Barbies because one gets to be one character. I can be the other character. Uh, most of the things fly everywhere except for where they're supposed to fly. Uh, and now with all the filtrations, like the other one of the games I had them changing colors and they had to guess what the colors were. So with the kids involvement and kids are really good with tech, we're like yeah. discovering all kinds of fun stuff. And Amazing. I have like a 16, 17 year old that he helps. He wants to do the animations. And I'm like, OK, because this technology will help them in the future if they know how to do Google Slides, uh, PowerPoint, Canva, if they know how to create a game on WordWall. I let them do it. I'm like, come on, guys, let's do it. Let's make it interactive. And it's going to be fun. And because they create it, they feel part of it. So they're very excited to use the lessons. And, you know, they are supposedly 50 minutes, but I usually break them to two 50 minutes because I divide the lessons, I divide and conquer. My strategy is I want them to master reading the way I mastered it. So there's guided questions, like a million guided questions on each slide. So and then, yeah, that is fantastic. I just want to say, I've got a few more people tuning in. I can see the numbers going up. So if anyone's just tuning in now and is wondering what we're going on about, um, today we're really excited to announce a collaboration between Abridge Academy and Young Learners Curriculum with Brenda, um, incorporating some of Brenda's incredible stories, which are just amazing. And Brenda's been telling us all about um, into the Abridge Academy Curriculum Ultimate Membership. So if you're interested in learning more about that, there is a link somewhere around the video um, to join and sign up. So do feel free to check that out. Um, if you're just tuning in now and wondering what we're going on about with this new collaboration and Brenda's incredible stories. Um, so it sounds like there's so much that goes into the development of these stories, which I think is fantastic. 
Um, and you mentioned that the kids really love like seeing the characters and the ideas that they've created kind of come to life. Why do you think the teachers should use these interactive stories with the students? Like, what are the learning objectives? What are the students there are get so out of many academic? learning objectives? They're going to learn how to read. They're going to learn how to think. It's critical thinking. It's going to be uh, we involve reading, writing, speaking, science, math, cross curricular, and the best thing that sets stories apart. Oh my gosh, then I'm off the camera. What sets stories apart is stories are like movies they can watch and read it like a hundred times. Now you tell me any kind of curriculum lesson that they're going to make you, I, I did that already, but if they want to be inside of it with you, they're going to go over and over and over and over, which they should be doing with the curriculum too, because curriculum is fantastic. And there's nothing wrong with doing like a page over again. And I get, I get in trouble all the time because my kids catch me because when I use your curriculum and I love your curriculum, like we did this lesson already. Yeah, but you didn't master it. Because in school, that's how the kids learn. They didn't learn in only one lesson. We would take one lesson, it would last, that theme would be for the entire month. You're a school teacher, you know. If yeah. they learn a song, they learn it a hundred times. Kids love repetition. And like- Teachers not so much. <laughs> the no. number of times those songs get stuck in your head. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. I love dancing with the songs. I love brain Yeah, brain. absolutely. I think you're right, that repetition. The, thing, the great thing about stories is that the kids can really, they love the story and they love rereading the story. And they love talking about the story. They love coming up with their own ideas on the story. And you've also created, we'll show these a little bit later actually for everyone to check Three out levels. as well, a whole bunch of resources that go alongside the slides oh themselves. God. The slides have got the story and lots of activities, but they're also like downloadable resources, extra materials and things to accompany that, uh, which is great. Parents, if you want to extend we, we, your lessons too. we want to make the parents happy. So there's like downloadable flashcards, downloadable PDFs. You will never have a child tell you, I want a copy of that flashcard. Uh, we do have downloadable videos, but we're going to be changing that because instead of taking all the storage from you because of the help again with Katie, because she's really been a very vital part of the development of this, we are now uploading into China itself. So our social media is now open in China. So now all you're going to do is be able to take the links. If you're teaching anywhere else in the world that has YouTube, they can use YouTube. The other ones in China now will have access to these stories as well, because we have I'm not going to say it Shang right. Shu. Shang Hao Shu. Yes, uh, we're starting. I'm starting now to go back and upload it. So it's so funny. Every time I take talk to Katie, I'm like, okay, here's the to do, wait. The to do list is getting longer and longer, and longer. <laughs> Sorry, and longer. Yeah. But no, just, it, but there were things to talk I, about. I listen to it, but I do listen to the feedback because if I didn't. It, these wouldn't be as wonderful as they are. Somebody said we need vocabulary. Now I had a mention of grammar and I said, oh my God, I can't keep adding grammar. People can add grammar on their own. There's just, these lessons are gonna be like in 50 slides long by the time yeah. I'm done listening what to What I quite everyone. like about it as well actually is that if you look at say the H Academy core curriculum is quite grammar focused. In yeah, way, you have the grammar. grammar lessons. Um, but then you can pick out things like the stories. If you're combining together your core lessons, then some fun stories to engage the kids. Exactly. In those. The, the stories themselves, you can then pick out bits of grammar that relate to the lessons they've learned like elsewhere they or teach like extra bits of grammar where it comes up. Um, but you've got the vocab at the beginning for like sometimes there are kind of difficult and sort of specialist words that are related to the story that they're unlikely to know otherwise and you've got those in the vocab section which is really helpful um so yeah awesome should we i know there's a few people getting impatient and excited to actually see these stories in action um do you want to just tell us a little bit like in terms of the lesson structure maybe just work through an example i think can you share your screen brenda sure um, i can and i'm going to share the whiskers um they're all structured uh, the same let me go over here and let me i i have windows 11 so i can put us and windows next to each other exciting <laughs> i don't i haven't used windows in years i should say that the school i was teaching at japan had windows it drove me mad i couldn't find anything anywhere so <laughs> it was like ancient windows i think it might be an xp as well yes um, oh yes i can see your screen here let me is it okay gone? no, no i'm, not, I'm just screen. moving it um do you want to screen share just the that Chrome tab rather than the whole screen because I think I can see your notes. Oh my gosh, I, I I did I did only screen share the Chrome tab. That's okay. Oh, it's screen sharing the whole screen. Huh. Okay. It I is. haven't put it on the live yet, so if anyone's watching us, it's just me staying on screen mumbling. But I can see in the in the bit underneath, like in the preview before I put it up. It's showing. Oh wait, 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 wait. So. It's all right. I don't know how to sh sharing audio or tab screen. I want to share audio. Normally when you share, you might need to go back to Wave Video, there should be the option to either share full screen or the share specific tab. There. Uh, oh yes, yeah, I can see that. Let me pull that up. There we go, okay. Um, 
so here's an example yeah. of one of these amazing lessons let me just position things a bit better on the screen our faces are kind of in the way and uh, let's hide this little bit there there we go okay awesome so Can just you a bit like this lesson would it be best just kind of work through and just show teachers a bit of like what's in the lesson the main content um okay. maybe a few tips as to how to teach these with your students so they are this is the interactive table of contents this is everything that's included we have vocabulary which is the introduction flashcards vocabulary one which is practice then vocabulary quiz which you quiz them then they have listening then they have the presentation with inter uh, with guided questions uh, and everything is also so they can listen and read comprehension there's a game a steam project and then the downloads so let's go through them really quick uh, like any other library, they have to enter their name and there's coding in it. So if I write teacher Katie, we're going to click that and it's going to remember and it's going to ask her directly the question, teacher Katie, have you heard of Halloween? And then we're going to click and she's going to go into the lesson itself. And this is always going to remember her name on the slides that can remember her name. And these are interactive flashcards. I just uh, did these this morning. You can click them to make them bigger and then start and then they flip. And you're going to need to tell uh, me they, how you do this sometime because I was like, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> this is then when they, I love the way they flip around. It's very animated and kids can really engage with it. Right. And it is a flashcard. Then you yeah. flip it that way. And if they don't understand it, you can go back and it flips back again. Uh, so then when you flip that, they also, first you're discussing to see if they can guess the word. So it's really good if they can try to guess the word and then they can listen and read. And if you click it, oh, wait I a don't second. think the audio gets shared on Wave Video, unfortunately, but there's wait like an audio recording of all this, which is great. It, sh it says, it says, it's shared. Do you it's hear it? not coming through on Wave, but if okay, anyway, out, they, can, they can sign up and check it out on the, on the AVG Academy website and have a look. Don't worry. And then we have the different the different ones. Uh, so there's the six new ones. And then I ask, make your own sentence using these. Then we are going to go to the next area. That's once they've learned it, then they actually kids ask me to bring word wall back because they like to compete with me and they like to compete with each other. And word wall is great because there is a leaderboard on there so they can make up their own funny names. We've had peanut butter man. We've had uh, monster grout. They, they make up their own names. They, and I tell them they don't have to use their given name they can make any name they want so this one is uh, the theme of halloween it's taking it a little while but it's it's in the halloween theme because word wall does halloween theme and i wish i could make games like this but i can't <laughs> so we probably could but they want to be as fun and then like they just and they do speak at the same time so they can hear and the kids do repeat after it and then we have a quiz which is the dragon quiz uh let me see the blank oh boy hmm kitty i think kitty, there you go there we go yay i got it right <laughs> and then it also i Ooh, used to I have, have the pop-ups as well yeah the images i used to have them first and then everybody got them right and i said i'm going to take the images out because if i have them first that's all they're going to do <laughs> is look at the image and it's just too easy uh then spooky then the owl then the uh, well anyway you can see that um it pops up to tell them that they're right and then we're going to go down to the next one and the next one is the video which i just did on youtube so that i could have it in here like two minutes before class Amazing. so it's a storytelling video it has music in the background and then they can watch it anytime they want and then the great thing about go. those is that um, the the links for the YouTube video and for the Xiaohong Shu video um, are like in the lessons, so you can send it to your students to preview before class, so they can rewatch it and enjoy the stories again, which is great. Then there's questions that you go just click on the eye and you get all the questions that you need to ask and it tells you what to do in each of the videos. This is talking about him. And then there's always some kind of animation or surprise in here. Here you click the mirror and he appears. So I flipped him around and one of my students noticed she's like the hat is wrong. So I do testing before I totally release these because I always find mistakes with my students. 
because I'm like, I go really fast. They go really slow. Oh, we've got a quick question. So, Someone Facebook commented, kids in China can't use YouTube. Don't worry, Brenda has set up a Shanghao account. Oh, you'll see it. Account. We have Shang, yeah, we have Shang, Shanghao Shu now. Little red so, book. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> Shang Shu. Yeah. So there's a, there's two links for the videos. There's a YouTube link for people outside of China, and there's a Xiaohong Shu link if you've got students who are in China. And in the older ones, you can sit there and download all of them and then upload them and send them to this. This was my favorite. Look, look, look. It's pin the tail on the bat. <laughs> That's amazing. I love the, the fun games and things that are built into the story so the kids can actually engage with it. Even if it's just like you say, clicking on the mirror and the face appears, things like that just make them feel like they're actually doing the story. Um, as yeah, well as of course. It. And we could, and we play I Spy. Every everyone like like the little girl goes, "Why is it you?" I'm like, "Cause it's a cat." It says perfect. It doesn't say perfect. It says perfect. Because my kid was, yeah, she was like yelling at me that I spelt it wrong, and I'm like, "No, no, no! I did it on purpose." And then there, you know, that's that part. And then we go here, and then they have to write. And with this one, Whiskers put on his favorite hat it was and then they write blue uh saw some owls in the trees they wore bright colored masks okay you can wear a funny hat and then what his... i love about this as well is that the the way the stories are written feels very like authentic they're written in a very sort of genuine way whereas i feel like sometimes when you read stories that have been written for esl learners they feel a little bit too like a textbook um so i like here that they're learning authentic english and that we're having the opportunity to talk about it, to discuss it, to put it into practice, to do these kind of quizzes and assessments. And it's oh, it's in red. What's happened there, Brenda? Maybe went to be spelled it wrong. I must have spelled it wrong. Favorite. <laughs> no, I, I spelled it right. Oh, well, yeah, there we go. Magic. And then it, up there, I added, and it says, You did it. You're spectacular. Like if they click it, they can hear. Amazing. In monster voice. And I spent some time doing this one. This one's a lot of fun. If they click on it, they hear the question. And if they move that, that's, you know, it's tic-tac-toe, but they have to answer the question right to get it. And I designed that one today as well. It was a lot of fun. And then they can choose which character they want. You can play up to four people on that at a time because if they're overlaying each other's character, it wouldn't make a difference. Um, and then here is the STEAM activity. They're going to design their own funny hat. And then they're going to talk about it and there's five minutes to do it. They, they click that and it's going to start, you, the timer will go down. And it's a Halloween timer. Well, that was a good one. And then finally, after that, this would be, I still, I'm trying to, I didn't upload the thing. I was racing to get it done, but you have okay. your story, your workbook, your cover, your flashcards. There's going to be a video link for China, a video link for YouTube. So all of the stories come with the very beginning. All it was was a story and a video. Then it, we started adding workbooks because teachers and parents wanted workbooks. Then we added flashcards because teachers and parents, trust me, these were not kids. They didn't want them. The kids sometimes want the written story, but 95% of the time, all the kids wanted was the video because yeah. they want to watch it again and again and again and again. But to make mom and dad happy, we included the story and, and the, well, we included the workbook and the flashcards and we're creating them and they could be different. I try to make some of them fun. Some of them are comprehension writing. And this is really good too, because you can create group classes with these as well as you can have them for individual one-on-one -on -one classes. That's fantastic. I just love how you've got all the resources there so that teachers don't need to worry about homework. They don't have to worry about sending through um, like videos of themselves reading out the story or something because they've all been prepared for them, which is fantastic. So yeah, really yeah. excited to have these lessons now as part of the Age Academy curriculum with this collaboration we've got uh, that we're talking about today. Just in case anyone's joining us live, <laughs> joining us now, this is Brenda from Interactive Stories. Some amazing stories we're just looking at there, um, which are from the uh, Young Learners curriculum, which is now collaborating with Age Academy. Um, cool. So thank you so much for that, Brenda. That was amazing. I'm so excited to properly check out that story myself as well. It looks great. Um, and it, what's fantastic as well, it's not just like those were some, that was a Halloween theme lesson, for example. They're not just sort of There's stories lots. that are, um, <laughs> how do you say, like standard stories. It's great. You've also got themed stories that link in with uh, different celebrations. Yeah. 
because we're starting, I think we have, uh, we're starting with fairy tales and then Tommy goes around the world and he was visiting a lot of, I got sick of bringing Tommy on a trip. So I stopped that for a while because I just yeah. got tired. I'm like, and the line was just crossing over itself because I think we went to six countries. So you're going to have Tommy. We're starting with some of the fairy tales. Uh, and then like I have all the themes. Like if I color ho cover holidays, I'm covering Kwanzaa. I'm covering Hanukkah. I'm covering not just traditional holidays, but I want to get everybody inclusive holidays. That That's why I want it to really represent my library, the whole world, not just one culture, not just one area of the world's holidays. Like we have bonfire night. I had no idea what bonfire night was. Um, Claire just had been tell me. Yeah, like it's a British thing, night. and they throw a poor yeah. man on the fire like over and over again. Like yeah, if you actually think about the story of it, it's a bit, it's a bit dark. But um, exactly, bonfire so night's I, a really this, big this, thing in the UK. So it is. And it's great. And, teachers can celebrate these stories from other cultures as well. So if there's any Americans out there who wants to know what on earth bonfire night is, <laughs> that lesson is definitely something exciting to check out. Yeah, and it's really good, and the video did really well too. But I try to like put a twist on it. So I said a scarecrow. I didn't say like they're yeah. and I might be able to make it for younger kids, but I, I kept it to the older theme because it really was not appropriate. Like I have some stories that yeah. you only have two of the stories because, you know, maybe that story is too babyish for somebody that's a little bit older level or vice versa. The older level is too hard for the baby level. That's but something I just point out. So these stories are available not just at one level. There's actually two or three versions of every story, uh, including like sort of a more beginner's one that might be great for really young learners, um, all the way up to ones that are more suitable for sort of preteen students, perhaps, um, and above. So there's a, a range there, different English levels, and as you say, suitability on different topics and things too. Um, should I show people as well where to find them? I think that might be quite useful. Yes. We've got here, let me just pull it up. This is your dashboard. Why is it such a long, thin shape? Let's just make that a more square shape. Okay. Um, so when you go to Abridge Academy and you log into your Abridge Academy dashboard, if you haven't signed up to Abridge Academy yet, uh, feel free to sign up. Uh, we have a free tier uh, for you to try out some of the lessons for free. But if you want Brenda's incredible stories, you'll want to join the Ultimate Curriculum Membership. Um, and information on that is on the website. I'm just going to very quickly pop that on the screen here. Uh, abridgeacademy.com slash curriculum or if you just google abridge academy it comes up um so feel free to check that out there then once you've logged in you end up on your member dashboard hopefully this is familiar to any any existing members uh, we've got our members dashboard here. Member. and yep and as you scroll down we've got our normal step-by-step -step curriculum but if you keep scrolling down we get to the expansion courses and two new exciting things have appeared here we've got tommy's travel adventures and the interactive stories. So at the moment we're um, trying out this collaboration with a selection of our favorite stories from Brenda's interactive stories curriculum. And we've picked out these kind of categories to make them easier to find. So there's Tommy's Travel Adventures and Interactive Stories. And also within seasonal celebrations, you'll find those stories like the Halloween themed one, um, for example. And there's some coming up, we've got Thanksgiving. Um, Christmas. Oh, what else I put in there? There's yeah. a few others coming up I just added the other day and are now completely gone up my mind. Bonfire Night you mentioned um a few of those anyway check out the seasonal celebrations ones for things that are coming up related to those but yeah all you have to do is you click on say tommy's travel adventures for example i love these ones they're great um so tommy's travel adventures and there's a picture here you can just take the picture and use it for your promotional things if you want to i don't know advertise story, uh, these classes for your each students story also has it but you have the actual yeah. you put them in the course in each story also has cover photos yeah, there's it's cover speech, individual story and overall course ones as well. Uh, so feel free to take the image if you need it. There's a quick introduction here with some key information to have a look at, just to check, you know, what the topics are about. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll find um, the stories that make up the this sort of section of the curriculum. So in Tommy's Adventures, there are six stories available, and it's basically Tommy go on various adventures around the world. And in each, each location, he meets up with his friends, he learns more about the local culture, he goes on adventure, he visits famous places. Um, and so it's taking students on like an adventure with Tommy. So that's why I really love these. I'm sure Brenda can say more about this, but I just, this is one of the ones I was looking through and like, oh, these are so exciting. Um, yeah, so it's, been, it's really... They're actually cultural so that like, I have students that are from South Korea. So they're mm -hmm. included in there, mm -hmm. I, students from Japan. So I was able to check a lot of the facts and they tell you about the foods. So basically each adventure tells you about the, the food or they're gonna do something while they're there. Um, they're going, I think they met kangaroos and I'm not sure, didn't they meet kangaroos in, 
Uh, they Australia, met yeah. kangaroos in Australia. They uh, went on a tiger safari in India. There you go. They get to travel the world. They can hear the airplane. They can travel the airplane. Then they can recall where they were. They get stamps in their passport. So they really feel like they're at the airport. And as they go through the adventures, they get more and more stamps into their passport. Um, and like we, we did have a lot of fun. And then like the mm -hmm. maps, the maps each have like the animals or <laughs> so they have to which, which animals oh, can yeah, you see from the country? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see it. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so I'm not going to go through in detail all the lessons. I want people to go and check them out themselves. Um, okay. But yeah, when you get through to the lesson page, you'll find a quick summary at the top uh, just about what the lesson's about. And then we've got two or three versions of the lesson available at different levels. So, for example, these Tommy's adventures. There's three in adventures. There there's should three, be a three in, every in, in every one. Uh, the only yeah. one that I might have a little bit different is the fairy tales. Yes. So sometimes we've only got two, I think, in the fairy tales, um, depending on the story. Uh, um, so you can uh, pick I'll, the one that's most suitable for your student, oh, depending on their so. age and their English level. Is that South Korea? Yeah, I'm like, Bing Su. I'm like, I know what Bing Su is. That's <laughs> ice cream. Yeah, my South Korean students taught me. <laughs> So amazing. So yeah, yeah, you can enjoy the story. You can pick the one at the right level. And also underneath, you'll find links to the various downloads. Um, depending on the story, these ones, I think, are your slightly older ones. They've just got the story PDF and the cover image. Some of them also, as we mentioned earlier, got the video links. Um, they've got workbooks. They've got flashcards. All of those are linked under the story uh, when yeah. they're available. I'm the only person creating. You can also find them on the last slide of the lessons. I'm the only one creating this. So guys, if they're, I'm getting as fast as I can, I'm good. Cause I love to write. So I could have been like taking all my time and updating everything, but I missed writing. So this past weekend, like for the four or five days, I've been racing uh, to get this, this story, the, the new Halloween story up because I want a new Halloween story. I already have one, two, three, I think this is like the fourth different, different story. Because I, it doesn't have to be always the same. And like I said, I got inspired by the images, and I'm like, oh, I've got to do a cute Halloween story because yeah. some kids were scared from the Halloween costumes last year. I remember. Uh -huh. and if anyone has any questions, yeah. feel, feel free, free to, to ask, ask in me. the comments. We've got a few people in the chat saying like hello, which is great to see. We've got um, a few people joining a little late. So you're welcome to come and listen in. We're talking all about this amazing collaboration between Young Learners Curriculum and Abridge Academy. Um, so feel free to listen in if you're just tuning in. Um, you can zip back as well and watch things if you've missed stuff. Someone and else saying hello. Can we see the fairy tale one? What we have for fairy tales? Yes, that's what I was going to show you next as well. Yep, so we've got the Tommy's Travel Adventures here. I was also going to say on the left side, which our faces are currently covering, sorry, um, there's you can navigate between the different lessons Countries. in the course as well. So, for example, here on Tommy's Adventures, you skip between first lesson in Australia, South Korea, Japan, India, China. You just click on but them. But they'll lose the stamps. Actually, they'll gain stamps for countries they didn't go to. Yes. <laughs> if they skip. And if you go back to the dashboard again, I'll just show you where you can find the, um, where they're the kind of fairy tales and the more traditional stories, which are just here. Again, they're under expansion courses, under the beginner's level. You will hear it says interactive stories. Um, and we've got this wonderful picture of Brenda's face looking enthusiastic. I was laughing. I was here. like, I was like, how did she find that photo of all of them? And then you I took do... off your Facebook, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I, I, I put, I, I love goofy photos. So my husband's like, that's you amazing. can't do that professionally. I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> well, that's, the, that's the whole fun of it, right? We're teaching kids here, so it's good to be involved yeah. in our lessons. So yeah, if you click on interactive stories, you get to a similar kind of summary page about this uh, section of the curriculum, which is the interactive stories. Again, there's a cover image, there's some information about the lessons, who they're suitable for. And then under curriculum structure, it's not, as we say, they're not like a fixed structure. You can follow these in any order. Um, you can just pick out one-off lessons, you can teach all of them. Um, you can teach them over several classes or within one class, however much um, you know is suitable for your students. But if you scroll down, you can then find the stories here just listed underneath and they're also in the sidebar menu when you're on the course page and you can just click on any of these and have a look like i love this one unicorns can't swim it's one of my favorites um it's just so fun and i feel like there's a lot of more into and a lot of these stories which is great yes yeah that was one of my favorite books as a kid Giraffes uh, that's why you recognized um, it i was like how did you know what yeah you i was like i knew this one <laughs> But, but I think what I love about these stories is they have morals and things for kids to learn from them. Um, it's like unicorns can't swim. It's telling, you know, it's encouraging students to persevere and overcome challenges, except that everyone's different, but we've all got different skills and we can learn from each other um, mm -hmm. and don't just accept that someone told you you can't swim. So, you know, that's it. 
which is a it's a really cute story. And also, he he was visited by the frog from yes. the caterpillar. I mean, I mean the tadpole, mean. the tadpole, the tadpole. If you notice, he went to go visit the frog, and the Ooh. frog was the one that taught him how to swim, and that was the tadpole. Oh, I hadn't even made that link. That's fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. So we've got the very hungry tadpole as another lesson that's available um, within these interactive stories. And that was based um, yeah. on the caterpillar lesson. Yes. Then the teacher. Very popular stories with kids. The little, the old woman that swallowed a fly. I made the teacher swallowed a butterfly. That was me. I think these are fantastic. Yeah. So if anyone's trying to find these, just log into your Age Academy dashboard and you'll find them under uh, the expansion courses here. Um, Tommy's Travel Adventures, the interactive stories, and the seasonal celebrations have all got these amazing interactive stories for you to enjoy. And you also find them under latest lessons. If you scroll down to the bottom, you find some of the latest ones that have gone up just at the bottom here. Oh, there they are. There's all the Halloween from yeah. last year. Yeah, they're in seasonal celebrations um, if you want to check those out. And they're also. Yeah, one all lessons. day. And also, the, Hallow the Thanksgiving one also is good to teach about gratitude. Because the Thanksgiving mm -hmm. one is really covering gratitude, so it's not just Thanksgiving. But yes, I think it's because I'm like, what I'm grateful for. What something. I'm grateful for. And then yeah. uh, the one, the little bear, which I actually wrote before I did the Halloween. And again this year, I did it again. I fixed that one before I started Halloween. Because it was mm -hmm. more of like seasonal too, because it talks about fall and the things you see in the fall. So, you know, this is what we have in the fall, pumpkin pie and the harvest and so even though it's kind of a Thanksgiving story, it kind of fits the fall, but that's yeah. the grateful one. Yes. Oh yeah, this is the grateful one. Sorry, I clicked on this one first before okay. we started to talk about the one full day story. There's loads of these and I just encourage teachers to go and check them out themselves and have a play around uh, and enjoy um, these great stories with your students. Um, I think I'll probably stop sharing the screen. Let's go back to Wave Video. Where are we? Where's my face? Oh, there's my face. How beautiful. <laughs> um, okay, so have we got some questions? Oh, Heather's commenting, how long would these resources be available? Um, so at the moment, this collaboration we're doing is a kind of trial collaboration between Abe Academy and Young Learners Curriculum. And we're hoping if these are popular, let us know how wonderful they are. There's actually a review button at the bottom of the stories. You can write a little review. Um, tell us what you think. And if these are popular, we're hoping to make this a, a long term collaboration. But yes. Um, um. I think it's a beautiful collaboration because I've always admired Katie and I'm not somebody that never liked, Oh God, I don't want to collaborate with you. We're, we're enemies. No, we're not. We're, we're people have their own teaching style, their own learning style, and we can always accomplish so much more together. And I use Katie's stuff. I may be a creator and I have my own curriculum, but I go to Katie's too, because Katie's got it all on Genially. I've got like Google slides, mine's for dancing and jumping. And then once they calm down, then I'm like, Oh, now they could, they're ready to learn the book. Let's go over to the book. And I love, and like I said, your, your lessons are so great because they, they remind me of school because there's always a review. There's always something at the end of it. It's always, you know, repetition teachers might be like, Rep that's the only way these kids learn. So, Absolutely. and mine is more like goofy because I'm the goofy teacher style. You're like the more, not, Cool. <laughs> no, there's a reason I became a secondary school teacher, right? Like, yeah, I do not strict, but you, you but you have structure. I was never, my classes were chaos. My kids were allowed to talk in class. Uh, we took classes outside. I, I was oh, not wow. the type. That's and, really cool. Yeah. And we used to like, I didn't have to correct homework. They just exchanged and correct each other's homework. I was like, I trust you guys go for it. You know, and yeah, we don't love it. Who discovered the wonders of self-marking homework and was like, kids do a quiz. <laughs> that was ah, my approach. But I didn't even let them mark it themselves because yeah. then they could like lie. So I had them like with their friends do it <laughs> mm -hmm. and then be nice. They were never allowed to put an X on a page. They, they weren't yeah. allowed to X up anyone's You know what page. I discovered in Japan? Um, so sorry, completely off topic, but mm -hmm. interesting. It links into this. Um, when I was marking the first marking I did in Japan I marked it like we do in the UK in the UK right we put a cross next to stuff that's wrong um and we circle some of this mistake like sometimes it's a bit it's considered a yeah. bit aggressive like a cross right so sometimes you just circle the mistake and like if you got it right you put a big tick next to it because you know well done that was correct or check mark mm -hmm. if you're American sorry um and in Japan they do it like the other way around so a circle means it's right and a cross means it's wrong but if you do a check mark it looks a bit like a cross mm -hmm. because it's kind of like two lines so they think you've done a cross when you actually ticked it as correct 
And if you circle something, be like, this is the grammar mistake, you know, come back and check this grammar mistake. They're like, oh, yeah, I got it right. <laughs> Which is, so the first time I marked everyone's homework, I handed it all back and the kids were like, what is this? <laughs> and it was, yeah, I learned from that. Yeah, and I, um, I never believe, and I think, you know, those X's, it just, I never really liked Texas. I because I why really, it usually would negative. circle the mistake instead of crossing it because a cross is a bit like you know wrong. Whereas a circle is like. But we do we do cross things on the on the on yeah. my stories. We do cross things. They they like to do no. Does it like no? <laughs> it's more fun when it's sort of animated and stuff. It feels less. <laughs> whereas I think it's only if you get back a something you've handed in as an assignment and it's got cross marks all over it, you're a bit like ugh. Well, that red pen doesn't look good. Um, but yeah. But anyway, let's go back excited. to. Let's go back to the questions. Oh, Stephanie's commenting here. It's the same in Korea. Circle means it's correct. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like I have a lot of Korea. Korean students. Oh, boy, I've Asian given them maybe. lots of X's oh. and, <laughs> and check marks. They use the stamps on Zoom. So the, the stamps, you know, you, you don't have many options in the stamps. Oh, it's the same on my PlayStation control. Oh. That's interesting. Isn't PlayStation owned by, I want to say a Japanese company or a Korean Japanese, company? Japanese, I think, maybe. Not Korean. I think it's... I, I don't know. I know like Nintendo, for example, is a Japanese company. Um, there's quite a few big games companies that are based in Japan. So I wonder if it's come from that. That's interesting. I thought it was America. Nintendo is Japanese, or they're massive in Japan. I'm pretty sure it came from well, Japan. Yeah. They might now be established in America as well. Like they might have a, a base there for, I don't know, tax reasons or something. Um, but yeah, the city I was working in Japan was just like just along from the big Nintendo development. It's Sony Group. It's Japanese. So they were doing a lot of, there were a lot of people in my city who worked in Nintendo. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's, I just checked it, you know, same thing I do in school yeah. class. Come on, guys, awesome. use your phone. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> uh, here we go. Yeah. PlayStation owned by Sony. Oh, but Sony, yeah. Go. She checked it too. <laughs> <laughs> Look at everyone. Look at all research going on here. Fantastic. Great. Uh, anyone got any more questions for Brenda about these interactive stories um, and this new collaboration uh, with the Abridge Academy curriculum? I think we've answered most of them. I'm going to quickly have to scroll back in the chat because there was quite a lot of questions or like comments earlier. I think we got to most of them. Yeah, I think we covered all of this. Um, yeah, great. Okay. So I think that's everything for the questions. Um, Brenda, anything you want to add before we finish up? I'm excited because, like I said, I've always admired you. And I've always, I, guys, the reason I'm doing so well on them was because I'm always looking at her stuff too, going, I got to do the same. How do I do this? I got to teach myself how to code. How did she figure this out? So I'm actually teaching myself as I go along. But now I'm like, you know, we got, we have learned my coding now I'm at, but as you can see, my tic-tac-toes aren't like anyone else's because I have so much going on. Like the kids, one of the kids. I love that we share people. ideas as well. Like literally the other day you showed me something to do with a spinny wheel thing that I didn't know I could do, which was really cool. Oh yeah. The live um, wheel so one. Teaching each other useful tools that we can use to make the lessons more interactive and engaging. Yeah. But um, yours are always very interactive and engaging too. And I, I, I love how like you are really good. Like anybody need tech, we always have to go over to Miss Katie because Miss Katie was like, oh yeah, you can do the box. You can make it bigger and smaller. And I'm like, I don't care. They're all, yeah, my boxes are all small and hers like fit perfectly in the text. And I'm like longer, shorter in my box. Nah. I'm just like, just well, get it up. Always though, is that how fun they are? I feel like my style is quite the formal learning, and it's great to have these interactive stories available to teachers within the curriculum uh, for them to enjoy that more creative. And it complements it complements each other because you can do one day you can do curriculum, the next day you can do stories, and that's what I do mm -hmm. with my kids because I, I can't keep them just doing stories all the time. Stories are fun. Stories teach a lot, but at the same time, they have to understand the books, the grammar, so them. It's, it's, it complements each other. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. I think a lot of teachers are using the core lessons for like, you know, one or two lessons a week. And it'd be really great to be able to introduce your kids to the stories and have that as an additional lesson per week. If you want to earn a little bit more money by having a few more classes, do it as a, a bit more fun for the students. Do it, um, as, and do it as like a group class and it'll even be more fun because mm -hmm. they will bounce off each other, pair, share, think, stuff like yes. that. Because I'm going to start doing it in group classes. Something uh, you do I'm with groups as well is get them to act out being the characters in the story. So they can each be like a super boy going on the adventure to, I think, save the bank is the, is the super, super boy story. And someone can be the cat boy Sam, who's like the evil robber. And someone can be super <laughs> she boy. She knows the characters. 
I know the story's too long. I mean, enjoying yeah, it too much. Uh, yeah, and, and Jada, don't forget Supergirl. She was just casually flying yes. by. She's the one that heard the bell. I want more but Supergirl we, stories. Like, well, we, yeah, I have, I I have more. I have tons of like all, I mean, if you see how much artwork, I am like, people get addicted to clothes. I get addicted to music. She knows. And they just send me the coupon. And I'm like, 70% off. Oh, anywhere I see like buy one, get one free. So I have got like, create i have so many cartoons that i still haven't even animated yet like i have christmas stuff i didn't get all the christmas stuff up yet so i and like when i bought we'll superheroes i got them all yeah. i got them all i got all the superheroes my husband's Amazing. still waiting for me to stop when when is it going to be over and i'm like never we've got a message from heather can we submit special requests for other topics yes Yes. yes. How can that's where my stories came from? Uh, they can email me at Brenda at VLE Rock. <laughs> Even though I'm Young Learners Curriculum, I originally started as VLE Rock, which was Virtual Learning Educators. Very simple. Um, if you want to write that, I don't know if I can write that, but um, just submit it. And I do the the girl's dream was actually a request because I do free um, I do a freebie every week, and it's a collaboration between teachers, parents, students. And I ask them, what would you like me to create for free? <laughs> I because I I don't have anything else to do. This is my life on the computer. I don't. It's I rarely go ideas, outside. Right, the people who are actually loving your lessons because that's <coughs> and, yeah, and they're like, I need. Everyone. And they're like, I need this. And the the little girl's dream was what somebody said. I'd the other like thing this. I would say about contacting Brenda, if you comment on any of Brenda's lessons, oh, there you will send an email. So um, if you comment under one of Brenda's wonderful interactive stories with feedback or lesson suggestions or anything, um, it will put as a comment on the website. Um, if you just write, please delete comment. I can just delete it off the like viewing bit on the website if you want. And it will email Brenda as well with the comment. Um, Hopefully Brenda doesn't mind getting inundated with comments. Hopefully positive from people. This is actually, no, this is what I yeah. actually started a, a club, a membership club, but nobody wants to fill out the document. Only one person took the time to fill out what they actually wanted. So every week I'm left to decide, okay, what am I giving away for free? Okay. I'm doing a flashcard. This is what I want. But mine was, I want a collaboration. This is mm -hmm. how we develop. It's not what I only want, I want what you want. This is how the stories develop the way that they've been developed. Like I said, the little girl goes, I like the, that artwork. And she even helped me with the story, the, the, the magic, what is it called? The, the magical forest. She picked mm -hmm. the, the food. She picked the characters. She told Amazing. me which character was me. And I'm like, but I don't want to be in the story. No, you're in the story. Teacher Brenda, you're in the story. And I'm like, okay. So yeah, you'll see my name in a couple of the stories. One is the um, the Pioneer Park Easter egg hunt with my brothers and sisters. I dedicated that to my brothers and sisters. Um, Amazing. We have, we have a lot. Heather's saying thanks. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to contact Brenda with story suggestions, you can email her. You've got a Facebook group as well. Um, or you can just comment on any of Brenda's stories and it will send her an email with whatever you put in the comment. Um, so we also got a comment from Stephanie. Stephanie's saying, I'm super happy about this collab. Me too. I'm so excited. I had a parent asking my interactive stories. Fantastic. I wish you all lots of success. Well, I do hope you check those out, Stephanie, because that hopefully is exactly what your parents are looking for, which is great. Because I also this know Raz. Little Red Riding Hood. We yes, have this. We have this it. We have available. it. Yeah. Um, we, another thing, too, is uh, Raz is very expensive for teachers. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive. And I think as teachers, we can create it better. So I, this is another reason that I, I started creating interactive stories because I saw them, I saw them in education.com. I saw them and the other, and I'm like, they're not the same. They're just, we have to create everything with the story anyway. Why not make it more interactive and more fun as a teacher? Because we know what the kids like in the class. Absolutely. Cool. I absolutely love how interactive they are. Something you don't get with other story-based curriculum that's out there. I've yet to find anything that's interactive and fun and engaging and it's got things like the audio and the characters and all of that animation. And I, I changed my in. voice and the kids are like, that didn't sound like you. And I'm like, no, it's storytelling. No, it's not supposed to sound. I'm a bat. I'm not supposed to sound like me. And then you get the kids to do it too. And it's even, it makes the reading even more fun. So you'll watch the kids as they start reading like they did. Cause this, these are reading strategies all inside. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something I think, you know, when you're teaching the stories, it's good to listen, listen to the audio, talk to the kids about what they can hear, talk to the kids, about, like teach them storytelling techniques, because they can read the story out, don't just read the story out, them. get the kid to read out the story, get them yeah. to answer questions about what they can see, what they think is going to happen next. Uh, why do they think they did this? And we'll talk about the characters. So much you can do with stories. And I think it's fantastic. And the good thing about that is too, is then after a while, 
they start reading even before you speak because they've already they've already developed your accent. I have all of my kids, they had to have like a, a regular level reading. They have to have at least the A1 level reading. They can't come into the stories and not know them because it's not practical for them. They're still too little. So when they have like the A1, the Sephir A A1, which in, I used to be four to six, because in America we say four to six, but we both agreed that, you know, some 12 year olds are A1 and some yeah. four year olds are B1. So, um, you know, th it, it helps. And once they start reading and they get used to them and there's so many stories that they, you get in there and you say, oh, this is too hard. You can make it easier. If it's too easy, you can go higher. Cause like nine, no, most of the stories have multiple levels. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Cool. Okay. I think, okay. Interesting. I think the questions have kind of calmed down a bit now, which is, so I hope you've answered all the questions. Again, any last questions, pop them in the chat. If you're watching the replay, you can just comment under the video and with the questions and tag either me or Brenda, and we can get back to you on whatever the question is. Um, but I think we'll probably wrap things up there. So yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining us. Thank you so much, Brenda, for this amazing collaboration. I'm so, so excited um, yeah. to bring Brenda's stories into the curriculum and share them with all of you guys out there. Um, if you want to check out those stories, don't forget to check out the link under the video. Um, it's in the Ape Academy curriculum and you need the ultimate membership level. So you need to be an ultimate member to enjoy those wonderful stories because they're so incredible. Um, yeah, you need to buy the, the ultimate curriculum membership. There is a free tier available with some tasters of other lessons. Um, if you're completely new and want to just get an idea of what this is all about before you sign up, uh, there's a free tier too. Um, but yeah, to check out the link below to the Age Academy curriculum. And then once you're on your Age Academy dashboard, like we showed you earlier, if you're watching the replay, you missed that zip back. Um, you can then find links to lessons within your dashboard on the interactive stories and Tommy's travel adventures and the seasonal celebrations and all of that. Great. Um, so I think that's everything. I'm going to stop rambling. So thank you so much, Brenda. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything for me. Uh, stay tuned as well for some exciting updates coming soon as well, just generally from Abridge Academy. We've got our debating lessons to talk about. We've got new lesson redesign that's being launched at the moment. So you might notice some lessons looking a little different now, which is really exciting. So lots coming soon as well. So stay tuned for things like that. Great. Um, thank you again, Brenda. Thank you everyone for joining thank us. Thank you everyone. And I'm very excited about that. And like I said, I, I, I'm so excited to be working with Katie. Um, she's always been the one, help, help. <laughs> So I've bounced so many ideas off of her and she's bouncing back. So, and I love it because like, I never, I can't believe I've actually taught you some things too. She's like, yeah, you taught me about the live wheel. And I'm like, oh yeah. Cause I'm always playing as well on, on a lot of the stuff. Absolutely. So it's going to be a really great collaboration. So we've been working together so well, I think it's sharing ideas and stuff already, which is great. So I'm so, so excited for this collaboration. I've rambled a lot now. So <laughs> thank you so much everyone and see you again in the next um, webinar, whenever that happens to be organized. So okay. thank you. Bye.